Hello, my name's Amy. For those I haven't met before, welcome to our practice. Today we're going to be working across the lower back and um, looking for opportunities to find space and ease any pain, any aches, any niggles that might have occurred, particularly from sitting badly in a chair for a long number of hours, whether that's in the car or at your desk. Um, and generally a nice kind of 15 minutes before going to bed um, help you to help you sleep. So we're gonna get started. The first posture we're going to come into is often the first posture many classes start with, child's pose. Um, when we do something very regularly, we can become a little bit lazy and don't really take the time um, to prepare and to work our way into the posture um, because we just kind of come onto the mat and into the shape that we always make. So I always encourage people to try and kick themselves with those out of those habitual kind of patterns um, and one of the ways of doing that is to use some props to encourage you to go into a different shape than maybe you would fall into very naturally on a kind of regular day-to-day -day practice. So a block can be really helpful. So you're going to come onto your mat and for this first child's pose we're going to take knees wide. So you're taking your knees wide, toes to touch. If you can sit back onto your heels that's awesome but if you're up here somewhere that's absolutely fine too. We're going to slowly begin to make our way down to the mat and with the block you can take the clock down and bring your forehead onto it. So I really like to come down here in stages. Even if I know my head can come straight to the mat, I purposely give myself a few steps to get there in order to kind of slowly creep my body down. Um, so I'm gonna come in first with the block on its second setting. Um, so first being the lowest, second being a little bit higher, third being the highest. So kind of set it, set a second setting for your block. Hands come out either side of the block, palms facing down, fingers spread wide. Forearms come down, head to the block. And begin to work your hips back towards your heels. And you'll feel your sit bones, the bony bits of your bum, begin, begin to spread. And you can allow that by lifting one hip, one butt cheek a little bit, finding a little bit of a wiggle, a bit of space, lowering it down opening up the other side. So really working your way down and as you do beginning to feel your lower back, the space across your sacrum broaden and the space between each vertebra into your lower spine begin to increase. When your head begins to feel like it's really heavy into the block, you can move it to the next setting. Taking a breath in, taking a breath out, maybe moving your arms a little further forward, giving yourself some more space around your shoulders. And again, when your head begins to feel heavy, taking the block away entirely, if that's there for you today. And as you come into this pose, Allow your breath to support you. Taking a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. Feeling your chest melt in the direction of the mat, your armpits ease towards the mat as you exhale. Breathing in, breathing out, noticing the shift deep inside the tissues of your body and making the adjustments to your limbs to follow that. So one of the things I always say in class is it's not about how it looks, it's all about how it feels. And that's what you're trying to work towards. Feeling your spine lengthen as your hips sink back in the direction of your heels. Your upper back broaden as you melt your armpits down towards the mat. Your fingers find space as you spread them wide. And then soften. Let 
go of any trying and let your body fall into the shape. gentle pressure into your forehead, bringing your attention back to your thoughts and as they move away from the feelings and sensations of your internal landscape, bring your attention back to your breath and then back into your body. Massaging your head by gently allowing the pressure to roll a little to the right A little to the left. Easing the tension out of your neck. Breathing. Being. Letting go. to begin to make your way out of the posture but you're going to move very carefully begin to walk your hands back towards your shoulders taking your time feeling your way through keep your head down at this point when your hands are just below your shoulders take your attention to your sit bones to the bony bits of your bum the space across your lower back from there sink your hips back towards your heels. Head stays heavy, but you're rolling up one vertebra of the spine at a time. From the base of your spine, all the way up to the crown of your head. Uncurling, unfurling out of your child's pose. And feeling that natural S shape in your spine return as you draw your shoulders back head comes up last, closing your eyes and as your hips sink down towards your heels, feel the crown of your head lift towards the ceiling, your spine lengthen once more. Slowly bringing your knees together, we're going to take a second child's pose. So if you're doing this practice for yourself, you can choose to take both or take one or other, whichever is going to work for your spine today. So in this first pose, it's more about length through the spine, space across your lower back. But here we're going to round the spine. So you're bringing your knees together. And again, a block's a really nice choice. If with child's pose, your bum's always up in the air, you can take a block or maybe if you're at home, like a sofa cushion or a pillow behind the backs of your knees that can give you a little bit of support. But the other option is to take the support below the forehead as we did earlier. So again, I'm gonna take the setting to the highest setting. Head comes down, belly towards thighs. This time, arms are coming away, hands towards feet, and you're letting the shoulders round. So you're rounding the whole of your spine over your thighs, allowing the large muscles to melt away from the spine. And again, as you feel your forehead become heavy and really press into that block or support, you can lower the block to another setting. And it's a breath by breath shift. Literally just one breath in. 
and one breath out. Might be all it takes for you to bring your head down towards the mat. Hips are sinking down in the direction of the heels once more. Don't worry about pressing them down. Just let your butt kind of broaden. Space across your sacrum broaden and your spine rounds like you're a pebble on a beach. Cheeks slapped. Noticing where your forehead meets the mat and adjusting if necessary to create length through the back of your neck. And this will change day to day. So right now, I've come down with my hairline on the mat. But as I breathe, I begin to feel a little bit kind of stuck and crunched in my neck. So I'm gonna to shift to bring the space between my eyebrows to the mat, the tip of my nose resting down. And that just feels a bit more spacious today. Shoulders relaxed, but moving away from your ears, so don't let them hunch up. Just draw your hands towards your feet and then soften your elbows away from your body. Breathing in. Breathing out. Feeling that restriction in your breath with your belly falling against your thighs. And feel your breath massaging your internal organs as you inhale and exhale. This is a particularly powerful posture if you're feeling a little overwhelmed at any point, like your world's got out of control and you can't really get, get back in touch with yourself and what you need at that moment. Whether it's through an unhappy emotion such as anger or frustration, or maybe just because Everything's so discombobulated at that moment in time that you can't really find where's up and where's down for you. Feeling your breath in your body, on your body. Feel supported by your mat, the earth and yourself. We're going to come out of this posture just as carefully as we came out of the other version. So hands come towards the front, just below your shoulders. Attention to your sit bones, your bum. And from there, slowly roll up. So send your hips down towards your heels. Head stays heavy and curls in towards your chest. Starting from the base of your spine as you slowly restack. Eyes stay closed. Feeling those curves return to your lower back, to your mid back, upper back, and neck. Shoulders melt away as fingers reach down towards the mat. Breathing in. Breathing out. We're going to come into Happy Baby, also known as Dead Buck, so it really depends on how your day's been, as to which <laughs> name you're going to give it today. So you're going to slowly come onto your back, so making your way onto the mat. 
so your sparring is nice and spacious hopefully from your um, child's pose particularly across your lower back and you're going to continue working into that space so bringing your knees towards your chest you've got two options catching the backs of your knees take your knees wide so it's as if you're going to bring your knees down towards the mat either side of your um, torso if it feels good for you you can flex your feet and catch the outsides of your feet with your hands if when you do this your head and shoulders pop up just come back to bringing the hands behind the backs of the knees because that's really the most important bit what you're looking to do is keep the whole of your spine on the mat from the back of your head all the way down to your tailbone or sacrum and think about bringing your knees out towards the side so that you can feel some space in the hip sockets the bottoms of the legs don't matter so much if you lift your feet you will see and feel that there's a bit more space in your hip sockets than when you kind of collapse them they get a bit stuck so feet lifted hands can come inside your feet too but again only if that doesn't create tension through your neck and shoulders we're thinking about releasing tension after a long day in this sequence so finding where you can find space and ease Again, taking it step by step is the advanced option. So starting with the backs, hands behind the backs of the knees. And then if and when it feels good, bringing them to the soles of the feet. And you can take a little roll here. Think about less about rolling and more about guiding your weight from one hip. to the other hip and as you do feeling any tenderness in your kidneys and your adrenals massaging it away with the gentle weight of your body as your chin tends to lift as many of us experience just catch it dropping the chin back down towards the chest in order to lengthen the back of your neck and there's really no right length of time for any of these postures you can set a timer for yourself and three minutes is a good guide. Three to five minutes is always a good kind of guideline. But really, rather than a timer, if you have time in your day, be guided by your body. So come out, you're slowly going to release your hands. Allow your feet, heels to drop towards your butt, peeling your hips open, soles of the feet towards the mat, coming straight into your next posture, restful pose, really important posture, this one, it would be amazing if you would do it for 20 minutes every day, not many of us have that time, um, but if you did it would be a great thing for not only your spine, your pelvis, your belly, but your mental and emotional health as well. So taking your feet a little bit wider than hip distance, what you're looking to do is be able to completely relax your legs. But if I relax them where they are here, they're gonna lay out to the side. So I've got to take them to a place where they're just gonna be a bit wider than my hips. And now when I relax them, they kind of don't go anywhere. They're this gentle lean towards each other. They're not touching or anything, but they're just relaxing without falling dramatically in one direction or the other. Feet away from your, heels away from your butt. So not like bridge. You want to take your feet to a place where you can feel quite heavy through the feet, particularly the heels, but also the balls of your feet. So you've got weight through your lower back, your sacrum, weight through your heels. 
and you really feel grounded. Lifting your shoulders, just dropping your shoulder blades as you lift your chin, tuck your chin a tiny bit to lengthen through the back of the neck once more and feel your spine supported by the mat. Hands can come to your belly, taking your thumbs just below your belly button will naturally create a little diamond shape. It's not an important shape, it just kind of allows your elbows to drop down towards the mat, arms to be supported and hands to be soft on your belly. Allowing you to take your attention to your breath without force, sending your breath deep into your lower belly. And exhale, soften from there. Breath towards the pelvic floor. Softening away. Noticing any tension that you feel into the hip sockets into the hip flexors, the space at the top of the legs. And softening through your glutes. So allowing a kind of relaxing sensation in order to release this space as you breathe in. And you breathe out. Thinking about bringing the qualities of water into your pelvic area, into your belly. Just imagine it sloshing gently into the bowl of your pelvis. We hold a lot of tension in our hips, into our lower belly. Partly caused by the way that we live our lives, sitting for long periods of time. Contracting the hip flexor, extending across the lower back, rounding into that space for many hours. But also, you know, sucking in your tummy is something that we hear a lot holding on in your kegels to your, you know, hold on to your wee or whatever it is. All of that's good to strengthen those muscles, but you also need to be able to relax those muscles and release. Be noticing any vibrations, any kind of butterflies that show up, more emotional and energetic sensations. Becoming aware of them on your inhale but allowing them to flutter away as you exhale. And so as I say, you can really stay in this posture just for as long as you have. And with each breath, you're feeling more and more grounded, not just down to the earth, but also through to your pelvic floor. It's a real kind of move away from the head, through the heart, right the way down to your root. When you're ready to come out, slowly drop one knee to the side, coming onto the outside edge of your leg and your foot. 
and then just slide your leg down, extending it to the bottom corner of the mat. Drop the other knee out. Allow your leg to, your leg to slide down, working with the natural circular shape of your body. Arms can come out by your side. Noticing your spine. Noticing the whole back line of your body. And the front line of your body. From the tips of your toes to the crown of your head. And you can end your practice here. Or if you really feel like an inversion is something that would work for you this evening or today, and if this is the end of your day and you're about to go to bed, this is a really great option to help ease you into sleep. We're going to come into waterfall. So we're beginning to come out of this Shavasana the same way we came in. So slowly drawing one knee up towards your armpits, and then rolling onto the sole of your foot, bringing your knee back up. Sliding the opposite leg up towards the armpit, rolling the sole of the foot over, coming back to centre. I'm just going to drop to the side so that I can get a block. So a block, a book, or if you're by a wall, taking your legs up by a wall is a really nice option for waterfall. So as you come back down, you're going to take whatever support you have just underneath your sacrum, that flat bit at the base of your spine, just above your bum. And you're lifting your legs. So there's no effort. So you've got to find that sweet spot where your legs are that's not pulling onto your lower belly muscles and is not causing you to really, to start off with, Feel a lot of compression into your belly with your thighs too far over. So there's a little kind of sweet spot right in the middle where your legs feel lifted with absolutely no effort. And your knees can bend, your feet can be floppy. There's, there's nothing to do wrong here. Arms can come out by your side. If you feel like it, you can take them wide or over your head, but give yourself space. Allow your elbows to be soft and your palms to be open. Feeling all those tingly sensations as the blood begins to slowly trickle from your feet. Your heart softens as it works a little easier. Again. You're free to stay here for as long as you like. And when you're ready to come out, you're just going to drop your heels towards your butt. Allow your thighs to sink towards your chest. And just allow that pressure for a while on your belly. The heaviness. And you're slowly going to drop your knees to one side, rolling off your block, your bolster or away from the wall. Come onto your side, doesn't matter which side. And support yourself as you make your way up to sit. Hands come together at heart centre. 
sit bones sink into the mat, spine grows long, crown of the head reaching towards the sky. Taking a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. Thumb knuckles the third eye centre in between your eyebrows. With a quiet mind and an open heart. Namaste. Thank you for joining me. I hope you had a restful practice and you have a restful rest of your day. Somebody rests, obviously. <laughs> Thank you.